All right, everyone, here comes another workflow video, including features from level one and two. We're back in psychology class, and in addition to learning about how the human mind works, we've also learned more about RemNote. So as you can see on the screen, I've studied from a couple more chapters from the textbook, chapters one and two, and partway of three and I've placed all the chapters in a folder called Psychology 101. So first thing I want to do now that I've created a more concrete location for my class is also add a source so that if I choose to review this class again in the future, I'll remember where to find all the native information. So to do this, I'm just going to copy the URL from my textbook and place it under the source section. And there it is. Thank you OpenStax for this free textbook and education. So let's continue with section 3.3, parts of the nervous system. And we'll use all the new things we've learned in RemNote for level two. To quickly access the correct section without using my mouse, I'll use Control plus O to open up 3.3, parts of the nervous system. And this works because I outlined the chapter earlier and just wrote down the headers as documents. I'm going to start from the top of the lecture. The first concept I see in the nervous system is broken down into two divisions, the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. And the central nervous system is further broken down into brain and spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system connects the central to the rest of the body. So if you recall earlier in level two, I discussed references and how it's a good idea to start thinking about concepts in relation to one another, because it helps connect the dots between your ideas, and it also helps RemNote's spaced repetition algorithm group your flashcards in a more effective way. So I want to get into the habit of paying attention to related concepts, like I see here for these two systems. Let's make a reference from the peripheral to central nervous system in the definition using open brackets, choosing the right one, and then hitting enter. And if I hover my cursor over it, the reference has now been made. A feature I really like to use is full page preview on hover. That way I can see everything about a concept rather than just its content. Let's turn this on in settings of the toolbar, scrolling down to experimental and checking the box. Okay, and go back to the document. Now when I hover my cursor over the reference, it displays all the descendants. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue learning from the rest of this lecture. Remembering to break ideas down to their most basic parts and thinking about concepts and how they are related to one another. I'll use references to concepts wherever I can. I'm not trying to be a perfectionist with my notes because I know that when studying flashcards later, I can always add cards to an edit later, and I can also easily maneuver between my REM using all the manipulation features we discussed earlier in level two. All right, so now I've finished this lecture and you can see things organized in a way I understand. The next thing I'm gonna do is make backlinks using text references for concepts I've learned that might've been mentioned in the past. This way, I'm further reinforcing newly learned information and making connections between everything I might have learned so far. So let's do this with central nervous system again. I'll move my pointer to this rem and use control plus K to zoom in on that rem. There's going to be a box on the screen where you can find text references. Another way to do this for rem that are not made into references, you can also click on the three dots at the top right of the screen and choose find text references to this document, and it will create a search portal. Inside the search portal, I can see a few instances of where I've mentioned central nervous system and link them to the reference so all of my ideas are connected. So now I'm gonna talk about studying from these lectures. If you recall the study document from level one, we use tab and shift tab and alt up or down to move documents around in order to study a custom set of lectures. But over time, you might have a ton of lectures 
and this method might not be feasible for creating a custom session. So here is an alternative and more efficient way of doing so. As you recall, I highlight and color code all my lectures depending on difficulty. I use red to indicate difficult or high yield lectures, yellow for semi-difficult, and green for the easy lectures. What you can actually do is filter a document using Ctrl plus F. My study doc is in purple, so I'll put purple. And then let's say I wanted to study only the hard lectures, or red. So I'll choose red as well. And now all the lectures I need are on the screen. So what I can do now is just move these lectures into the study doc. Another way to do this would be to use Ctrl plus M to individually move a lecture to the study doc. The caveat here is that you will have to move your lectures back to their original chapter if you want to maintain the organization of your notes. But I find that this is not super important because you'll likely want to study the difficult lectures often, and if you keep them in the study doc, you can take full advantage of the spaced repetition software. So my goal by the end of this kind of workflow is to move all the lectures that I really want to learn for the long term into the study doc to practice. All right, that concludes this workflow video. Hopefully you picked up some helpful tips. Congrats on level two, and I'll see you guys in level three.